one of the uh, best person in our ISA chapter. He is practicing in Mumbai since 30 years. Basically, his uh, areas of interest are uh, bariatric surgeries, difficult airways, and thoracic surgery, which are in fact from really we found of that cases that how sir did these cases in their practice uh, he is having very vast experience of uh, private practice as actually almost 30 years uh, he did uh, freelancing in the corporate hospitals so welcome you sir on this uh, platform of our isa nanded and uh, this is our uh, like flame of unity like that we are running a marathon since <coughs> first case meet to now we came to 39 and it's it will be i hope we complete 75 years so it will be tribute to our uh, isa nationals 75 years absolutely so we are like that with that our 25th years of our silver jubilee year of our ISA city branch also. So we are conducting this uh, case meets regularly. So uh, our main motto to uh, of this case meets is uh, in he very uh, heavy practicing persons not able to connect with academics and uh, that too in uh, even on online or offline so i also added in this we upload all recorded version of this case meets to on our isa youtube channel so anybody can see in his free time when whenever he is free as our anesthesiologist life is so uh, pretty difficult that you don't know what time you will be free Sir has delivered almost 200 plus lectures nationally and internationally also. So one of the really hats off to you that you came on our platform. Always happy to teach. I love teaching. Thank you. Thank you, sir. You can hear me, no? Yes, sir. You are able to hear me? Yes, yes, sir. clearly, clearly. And you can see me also. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Definitely. Fine. So once your screen is active, we'll go. Yeah, within one minute, sir. Just. Due to some technical glitches, uh, today's viewer uh, will uh, get some extra benefit always with this. lot of recorded versions are uh, downloaded in this laptop so it, it is running slow uh, yeah i understand i will I, yeah i will uh, try to delete but uh, they are so pretty listen um, to you don't want to delete them yeah I actually upload on youtube also but uh, somehow i'm not feeling that i should delete this uh, <laughs> record then you will have to take them in the another yeah drive. pen drive like that I, i'm trying that in a bigger hard disk because if it is yes. a huge presentation then it's difficult to yes yes sir. every presentation almost to one hour to 1.5 so yeah 
So it's a big one. It's a big one. And these are all important topics. We must discuss to the best of our abilities. I have very fond memories of coming to Nanded. In 2017. Yeah. I mean, lovely. That time, lovely that time I was a treasurer, but actually I fall in uh, at my home. I fall. So I got fractured. Deep. Oh my God. Yeah. So not able to join whole session or almost half conference was not possible arranged by me or activities in conference also. Yeah. But it was beautiful. We enjoyed thoroughly. Yes, yes. Yeah, now it is coming. So I will start slideshow. Yeah. From beginning. Yeah, from this slide only. Yes, 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 yes. What is So is it okay? Yeah, yeah, I can see. Only thing is to forward, I'll have to ask you, right? Yeah, yeah, definitely. No problem. I will do. Yeah. So these initial slides, of course, will go right. Everybody knows I am from Mumbai and uh, we are going to discuss difficult airway in uh, obstetrics. So next. Uh, next lasagna, Sachin. Next, next, next. Yes, yes. Yeah, yeah. So this is what we are going to discuss. Chalu kariya kare? Yes, sir. Yeah. Bilkul me yata introduction dilay. Ah, But still, still, yeah. Recorded is uh, is starting. Uh, okay. So one again, once again, uh, should I? Uh, no, 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 no. We'll go. We'll go. We'll go. You have yes, already. Yes. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. So sir. this is what we are going to discuss in next whatever time, about 40, 45 minutes. There will be some definitions I'll discuss. Then, of course, why the incidence of uh, difficult intubation in the obstetrics is on the rise. What's the role of obesity in it? How do we assess the difficult airway? We will discuss that also. Next, please. Sorry, sir. Yeah. And then we will also see, talk about some of the gadgets. How do we manage the algorithms when we have a known difficult airway or an unknown difficult airway? The algorithms are different. Is the extubation important? That's another question we will try to answer. And finally, we'll have conclusions, take home messages. And obviously, I expect all of you to ask questions, comments. So we start. Next one, please. So what is the difficult airway in obstetrics, we want to say? So whenever we intubate a patient, if you are doing a general anesthesia, cesarean section, or for that matter, any case, what is our idea? That is, we want to provide adequate oxygenation. That's one part of it. And second part, obviously, is the prevention of aspiration. Because Oxygenation you can pre supply even with a mask, but then aspiration you cannot prevent with a mask. And that is why we always try to intubate a patient. So whenever we are giving general anesthesia to a cesarean, or for that matter, any patient, these are the two main aims is that to give adequate oxygen and prevent aspiration. Then, of course, manage the depth control the ventilation, CO2 management, all that, all that comes. But the essential part of any intubation is oxygenation, prevention of hypoxia, prevention of aspiration. That is the whole game. So what is a difficult airway? Now, when you can't assure any of these, either oxygenation or prevent aspiration, that is a difficult airway. And invariably, it lands you into, I mean, your patient into hypoxia. Next. Then we will discuss what is impossible mask ventilation. Now that is inability to provide positive pressure ventilation by doing all these things. So what are we doing here? 
we are repositioning of the head and neck we are doing anterior jaw lift of the patient we put in an oral airway put in a nasal airway we ask another person to help us and try to ventilate such patient but despite that when you cannot ventilate a patient that is called an impossible mask ventilation next Sachin, next. Yeah, yeah, I'm trying to. Then what is a difficult LMA ventilation? Now, LMA has come into almost all the difficult airway guidelines and that is our second line of defense. If your tube is not going, we must try to use an LMA. But again, what is a difficult LMA ventilation? That is when inability within three attempts of device insertion, you tried three times inserting an LMA and it is not going, you are unable to give 7 ml per kg of tidal volume. Your leak pressures are less. You, you cannot ventilate a patient despite putting an LMA. That is a difficult LMA ventilation. Next, please. So how do you define difficult intubation? That is another thing we must know. Coming to the definition is, it is defined by when you do all these things, like alterations in management associated with failure to secure a successful ET tube. That means your tube is not going despite you trying all these stunts, like you change the position, you use different laryngoscopy blades, you use ask help, your help also tries to do the intubation. So more than one experienced anesthetist are trying to intubate a patient and despite all this you trying your external maneuvers you are pressing the larynx you are changing the position nothing is working and that is the time you say that my it is a very very difficult intubation that is this patient is having next please so what is the incidence now this has always been told to us that we have invited this problem onto us. So you will wonder why, how come we have invited this problem onto us? Now I can always, whenever I'm in a live meeting, I always ask uh, by show of hands that how many of you have recently done a general anesthesia cesarean section as compared to a regional anesthesia cesarean section? And most of the anesthetists lift up their hands that regional they have done maybe today maybe yesterday maybe yesterday night or what in my case today also i have done yesterday night i did one yesterday morning and both were regional anesthesia as compared to if you ask me when was the last general anesthesia section i did i'm i don't even remember it must be pre-covid so it's almost two to three years i have not put in a tube in a cesarean section and all the caesareans have been under regional anesthesia. So you will understand where I'm getting. Most of the anesthetists are doing regional anesthesia, spinal epidural for caesarean sections. So our training in general anesthesia for caesarean section is taking a back seat. If I haven't done enough, how my residents in a teaching institute are going to do adequately? So that is what is happening world -wide. So the incidence is increasing. It's one in almost 400. The recent literature, which I will show you, the incidence has come down significantly. It is now more common. It is now in some of the countries, it is one in 150. Some of the countries, it is one in 225. So, and that is what is happening. This was, this paper was written way back in 2007, 15 years ago. And what did they say? Incidence is likely to increase. And that's exactly what has happened. 1 in 400 is now becoming 1 in 200. In some of the countries, it is 1 in 150. Now, this is because, like I said, we have invited this problem because most of us are doing regional anesthesia section. Our experience in GA is taking a backseat. Since you don't do these things, suddenly when you are forced to do something, you are likely to make a mistake. So there are limited opportunity to teach and practice the skills that are necessary to obstetric airway management. And that is where the problem is. And on top of it, the obesity is increasing. 
any obese patient i'm sure all of you know it's difficult to intubate difficult to ventilate and in such patients when you try to do suddenly an intubation we have so next please now failed tracheal intubation during obstetric general anesthesia literature review we'll just see the evidence now maternal mortality from failed intubation is 2.3 in 1 lakh in ga for section maternal deaths are mainly because of aspiration or hypoxia like i said in my first slide and most of the cases they have found out that anesthetists who are managing th these cases are extremely reluctant to go in for a cricothyrotomy or a or a tracheostomy and whenever it was attended it was always very late by the time the patient had become hypoxic and patients with then the rescue became very poor and invariably patient landed with cerebral <laughs> hypoxia or even death next please maternal mortality and morbidity this is another paper which uh, discusses why mothers die and it was just a two years uh, study and see the leading cause of anesthesia related mortality were airway complication and ga has greater morbidity than regional and that is why we all the moment somebody tells me you got to do a section the first thing that comes to my mind is oh i am going to give reason unless and until i am forced to give ga for some reason i don't give ga and i'm sure most of us are doing the same thing and the world evidence is also saying the same thing next please so how common is this fatal failed intubation now it is eight times more common than the surgical patient so you have an surgical patient appendix or lap coli or a laparotomy compared that to an obstetric patient who's pregnant eight times you have more chances that you will have a difficult that's very very significant so when you have a ga section you got to be very very alert and especially so in an emergency cesarean delivery it's all the more difficult in an emergency cesarean section next please now is obesity significant we will see anesthesia complication now this was another paper where they tried to see if obesity has any relevance and this was done of course in united states of america and from a period in michigan from 72 to 84 okay in a in a in a 12 hour year study they found 15 cases primary cause was anesthesia related death 12 were obese so 80% were obese and 10 cases emergency surgery that was again 80% so emergency case cesarean section in an obese patient you got to be very very careful next please now again to answer this question they did the study after first study we saw 72 to 84 this study they did from 85 to 2003 another 18 year study in this you will see the number it was 15 deaths here it is only 8 deaths so number has come down significantly but six are obese so obesity still remains the problem and this time it occurred during emergence and recovery due to hypoventilation and obstruction that time it was intubation problem we i think grown over our intubation difficulties because we've got gadgets we've got video laryngoscopes we've got lmas so we are better off while intubating the problem is with extubation this time patients died because of hypoventilation and obstruction while coming out of anesthesia so this is another important study this is 2021 study okay last year study now this is from saudi arabia now i'll tell you one thing saudi arabia and in entire gulf lot of sections are done under general anesthesia as compared to europe america asia you will see this look at this what this paper says this is last year 2021 gynecological uh, journal G was used in see ten thousand cases. You know, imagine ten thousand two hundred and seventy five cesareans. Fifty one percent of them have undergone G. And about ten minutes back, I told you I have done my G section three years ago. So look at the amount of G sections that are happening in Saudi Arabia. Forty two documented difficult airway. That's point eight percent incidence. Incidence ratio is one is to one twenty five. I told you. 
first slide one in 400 now it's become one in 125 very very common what are the things same paper again failed intubation occurred in almost 60 percent of cases and out of this 60 percent 42 percent had difficult airway Next, please cs was in 55 percent of cases emergency mean age of the patient was 33 plus minus 5 so you can say 27 to 38 weight was 60 to 163 kilos that's significant 60 is quite a normal patient 163 is huge and over 58 percent so 60 percent almost weighed more than 90 kilos i mean indians are that way not very obese we are catching fast with obesity 90 kilo patients these days are pretty common in my practice also i've done max around 140 145 in an obstetric case not 163 as this study says next please and last slide on this particular uh, paper 50 percent of cases airway were rescued with lma so your lma becomes your important defense 50 percent reintubation succeeded and fortunately, in this study, outcome was good for mother and fetus in all the cases. That is something is very, very reassuring. They were doing more GA cases, more difficult intubation cases, in obese patient, in emergency. They had problems. They survived with elementary intubation. But thankfully, the mother and the child both survived. That's a really, really, really great thing. Why obese are at increased risk? Let's see. Because see, first of all, right in the obesity, the from problem starts even from pregnancy. So getting concept, conception in an obese patient is a problem. Sometimes they come for a lot of other things to you, like ovum pickups, then the ovum insertion, then they come for precious pregnancy. They've got lots of systemic diseases. It involves right from your top to bottom, every system is affected. Everywhere there is fat, so there is difficult airway, blood pressure, diabetes, central obesity, <coughs> no neck. So all sorts of these things are happening in an obese patient. You try to give a spinal or a neuraxial anesthesia, getting neuraxial anesthesia also is a difficult. Chances of failing such neuraxial anesthesia are very high in obese patient. And that is why when they land up in an emergency and all these things happen, you have to end up giving them a general Please. So why obese are at increased risk? Then when you start giving them anesthesia, chances are that the position may be difficult. The required pressure, the person who's applying may make it into a difficult intubation. The breasts are huge in these patients, so micromastia, that can sometimes cause problem for your laryngeal blade. Physiologically difficult airway. What I mean by this is there are two lives in a mother, her own as well as her babies. So oxygen carrying capacity in pregnancy, FRC has gone down. The uterus is pressing it from lungs and diaphragm from below. So the FRC goes down. The oxygen consumption increases. So they become a physiologically difficult airway. That means they require more oxygen per minute than a non-pregnant patient. And that is why the chance of getting them hypoxic as compared to a non-pregnant lady are much, much higher. And that is why they are physiologically difficult airway in addition to an anatomically difficult airway. And then when you know that I have an emergency case where the patient is not fasting or fasting, whichever way, is obese, has a fetal distress, you're working in not so great setup in the middle of the night with no help around. Now you can imagine what all can go wrong. Next, please. So American Society of Anesthesia is the close claims. That means close claims means settlement was done either by hospital or whichever way but then they open these cases and analyze to learn from them not to gossip around but to learn from them and what did they find most of the cases were substandard management means our planning was pathetic we had inadequate ventilation esophageal intubations difficult intubation was not 
what do you say, anticipated before. So you tried to give general anesthesia and then they could not intubate and the setup was not so great and they landed up in big, big, big problems. So this is for us to learn. What is the incidence of difficult intubation now in different countries, different seniority, different experience, it keeps on varying. And but frequently unexpected, usually difficult intubations. It's around 8% in some studies. More than three times the incidence witnessed in the non obstetric population. In the another few slides back, you saw eight times more in non obstetric cases. According to this paper, it is more than three times, whether three, whether eight, but still far higher. Then this study was done by Sachin Khetrapal. 22,000 attempts at mask ventilation were seen and impossible ventilation was found in say 0.3 or 0.4% of cases. Please. This another study showed it was 15 and a half percent. So I, like I said, it depends on the country to country experience, whether you're working in what sort of setup. So the real incidence in India may be in between somewhere. It may not be as high as 15, but it may be some. And what are the risk factors for this airway complications during pregnancy? There are so many which I have enumerated, like airway edema, FRC goes down, I told you, oxygen consumption is more, weight gain occurs, the breasts are huge. So these are physiological changes that are happening in the lady, which itself is causing complications. Then, of course, then there are more additional like bull neck, large breast, large floppy epiglottis, large tongue, and then there are then the next slide, please. Then there are other syndromes like Down syndrome, Klippel feel, all these Ludwig's angina things are happening. So there are multiple factors that are involved. So remember this, your airway assessment has to be good. But what is the reality? See this prospective study, 1200 patients, 51% of the difficult intubations were completely were anticipated. That means 49% were missed. So it's almost 50-50 out of the two, one is missed. So do your airway assessment very, very properly. Do your limon. What is your limon? Look externally. Evaluate 332 rules that your mouth opening is three fingers. Your hyoid to chin distance is three fingers bread. Thyroid cartilage to floor mouth is two fingers bread. Malampati, everybody knows one, two, three, four gradations. Your, is there any obvious obstruction? And your neck mobility. Malampati, we know, but remember just doing only, only one single study of Malampati is not helpful at all. It is good. It has 98% specificity, 80% sensitivity. Next, please. So multifactorial index will always help you like this. See, you are doing your Malampati, find out whether it is two, three or four. But find out if the patient has short neck, receding mandible, protruding maxillary incisor teeth. That also are risk factors which are associated with difficult intubation. So I'm in the pictorial format, I have given you about seven of them. So what is your mouth opening, thyromental distance, neck movement, mandibular protrusion, or your body weight? Malampati classification and presence of difficult intubation history in the past. So instead of doing just one study, do these all seven and they are superior to your Malampati. Okay. So the same thing is given here. In a British study, they found that age, in, as it increases, so a primary gravida coming at an elderly primary, 40, 45, which is again obese with a higher Malampati score. Definite independent risk factor for difficult intubations. Now, these are same thing in the pictorial format. Ask them to do the bite test. There are again problem. Your, your lower mandible is not coming ahead. Your atlanto occipital joint extension, if it is reduced, that also becomes a difficult intubation. Please. Then again, your thyromental distance normally six and a half centimeters. If it goes down to Less than six centimeters, then you have a problem. Your mandibular protrusion test, I told you, upper lip bite test. If your patient can't do this, that means there's a problem. And morbid obesity, 
again and again i'm telling you difficult intubation occurred in 35% of morbidly obese patients 300 pounds is about 130 140 kilos in india we have started getting 140 kilo patients i have done a few of my own so chances are that if you are ending up giving ga to these patients you will have difficulty either in ventilation or in intubation preeclampsia is another headache now these patients have got lots of extra vascular fluid they have oncotic pressure is low they have uh, got low platelets they tend to bleed more and repeated attempts of intubation can lead to airway edema glottic edema so how do you prepare when you want to give general anesthesia these are to the previous one please how do you prepare it when you give now there is an aspiration prophylaxis unfortunately sodium citrate which was available in india is no more available in india one company was making it not adequate cell so they decided to stop it ranitidine is sometimes available in few places where i work otherwise it is again banned injection format so now we have only perinom pan 40 so whatever is available please give to the patient the next thing you can do is if you are in a good setup where you have an ultrasound just put it on the stomach and check how much is the volume you can definitely see a full stomach or an empty stomach which will give you a lot of reassurance if it is an empty stomach you are happy to know that okay at least the patient will not aspirate please then positioning in an obese patient again and again it has to be a ramp position everybody knows about it the functional residual capacity increases now there is something known as eight you see normally when we do pre oxygenation what we do is tidal breathing we keep a mask 10 liters of oxygen ask the patient to take deep breaths and by the clock 3 minutes if we wait or end tidal o2 if you are monitoring and if it comes to 90 that is the end point of your oxygenation then you give your induction agents and then you give your uh, muscle relaxant and try to put in a tube but previous slide please eight different eight db is a different concept suppose you are into an extreme emergency where your surgeon is washed up he doesn't want you to wait for 3 minutes now what you are going to do so there is a method by which you ask the patient to take eight deep breaths in 1 minute and it gives similar oxygenation as what you would have got in after 3 minutes of tidal breathing so if you don't have time to wait for 3 minutes you have 1 minute ask your patient to take eight deep breaths you will get the same oxygenation so then next slide please somebody went in for four breaths people are smart if you have only 1 minute now they want to cut down to 30 seconds so somebody tried three 30 seconds four deep breaths what was the oxygenation and it wasn't satisfactory so if you don't have time 1 minute eight deep breaths thrive is again another beautiful thing 70 liters of oxygen goes per minute put it into the nose of the patient it is very very humidified so it doesn't trouble the patient at all it will cause op- apneic oxygenation and your patient will not have hypoxia hypercarbia will occur but patient will not die of hypoxia if the only take home message you want to take home from this lecture which i am giving for the nanded guys i would like to tell you at least have a difficult airway cart made in whichever hospital you are practicing this is how it is made different blades different airways different laryngoscopes oral airways nasal airways handles everything kept in a single trolley with tubes lmas fiber optic if you have put it over there it has to have wheel so that it can be taken to the ward to the ot to the labor room to the wherever you want to take it and if you have working in a multi storied hospital then you should have many of such things so that it can a life can be saved at least one take home message if you have a video laryngoscope it is another beautiful line of defense next please i myself most of the hospitals where i use i use cmac because that is the one they have provided me with what it does is look at it in, this is may to 2015 about 5 7 years the usage became rampant everywhere and they have found it improves the glottic visualization the speed increases quickly it intubates difficult intubations come incidents come down 
morbidly obese patients it is my first choice i don't intubate with a normal laryngoscope i go in with a video laryngoscope so if you have a uh, video laryngoscope then you must go with a proper position give a ramped up position oxygenate whether 3 minutes 1 minute is immaterial propofol or pentothal immaterial scolene or long acting immaterial as long as you are very sure what you are going to do go for it and use your video laryngoscope and put in your tube that's how in an anticipated difficult airway i would like to say on the left hand side whatever is given is avoid airway manipulation and that is what you must do spinal regional epidural combined spinal epidural or combined spinal or continuous spinal that's it whether it is labor whether it is cesarean section emergency elective you set your mind in such a way that i am going to give only regional and if your first spinal fails if it's a, there is still time make the patient sit and give another spinal after 20 25 minutes but if god forbid you decide to accept airway manipulation you want to go in for ga then prepare yourself well get some help have it in the proper setup in a tertiary care hospital with adequate help ward boys nurses colleagues with all your difficult airway cart ready with you different blades video laryngos and then try and do an awake laryngoscopy try and see if you can it's well and good otherwise go in for a regional anesthesia but what happens when it is unanticipated the problem starts with unanticipated here there are three so that's the algorithm which i was telling you about there's a green zone there's an orange zone and there is a red zone. our idea is to stay in the green zone all throughout so what do you do okay your pre induction planning and preparation we have just now said so you've got a whole team with you you've spoken to okay we are going in for ga you've got all the gadgets everything 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 is ready nicely okay so you've done your uh, your uh, no 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 go 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 back this this i need to discuss rapid sequence induction you will do you will do face mask ventilation you will do laryngoscopy and you can't see anything you will do one more attempt you will do only two attempts the third attempt has to be done by the senior most experienced anesthetist unfortunately in the night if you are working alone then you are only the senior most anesthetist around so there is no help around and then what are you going to do so two attempts maximum third attempt by the senior most if you are the only one around then third attempt by you only again try to get a video laryngoscope or something so that just keeping doing same thing again and again is not going to yield any different results so your first attempt was with say a size 3 blade you tried a size 4 blade nothing has happened change of position ventilate keep ventilating patient is getting ventilated fine up to that is fine third attempt with a video laryngoscope tubes goes in success everything is hunky dory continue with the case so you stayed in the green zone unfortunately that doesn't happen and now you are moving into the orange zone and that is you will have to announce difficult you, because your two attempts have missed the third attempt has also gone away now you can't keep attempting more ask for help call for help keep ventilating whatever you have with either with mask or with thrive or with whatever you have and try to put in a second generation supraglottic airway which can be a supreme or a, a <laughs> igel whatever newer ones you have okay again here also you will try only two attempts if you can't ventilate the patient you are in for trouble if you are successful go to the yellow zone in the corner which is mentioned is it essential to proceed with the surgery safe with the surgery or can we postpone if it is a dire emergency do it on an lma or try to put in a tube through the lma if you have an intubating lma and do the case if you feel ke okay, oh well this is not a real real emergency i can wait then wake the patient up the problem starts if you fail to even get lma in and then there is nothing in soon you going to have a complete ventilation failure or what they call it cico 
means cannot intubate, cannot oxygenate. So your patient is going to be hypoxic within no time. So now you have to do only two things. There could be a faint chance that patient has a laryngospasm. So just give a small dose of succinylcholine. I know it's you will feel very, uh, what you say, shocked. That what, how can that algorithm say, already I cannot ventilate this patient and they are telling me to give succinylcholine. What is going to happen? Is going to happen is if there is one person chance that all this is happening because there's a laryngospasm, that laryngospasm will get relieved and your tube will go in. But at the same time, you have this risk also. But what is there to lose? You are already in deep problem. So you are, you will, the next step is only you have to open the trachea. So before that, if you give succinylcholine a small dose, and try to open the laryngoscope, put in a tube of yours, what difference it makes. So when this algorithm was suggested, there was a huge uproar that they said, as it is, we can't intubate the patient and you are telling us to give succinylcholine. Then the explanation was given that, okay, it's it could be a laryngospasm, which will get relieved. And as such, you are so much deep in problem, adding a trickle dose of succinylcholine is not going to make some huge, great difference. Anyway, the next step is to open, either do a cricothyrotomy or a tracheostomy and continue with the case. Next slide, please. Sachin, next one, please. Hello. Okay, so La, Bila, now we are going to discuss is extubation important? Like you said, I, I showed you this study which was done by this American Jill Meyer and we saw that in the later part, that is that 72 to 84 was one era when they had deaths due to failure of intubation. 85 to 2003, all anesthesia related deaths were from airway obstruction or hypoventilation taking place either in the recovery or while you are taking out the patient, that is in the reversal. And this is because system errors. So what do you mean by system errors? Next slide, please. That is the lapses in the setup. What do I mean by that is, say like you are an anesthesiologist who's privately practicing, you had this case and you have four more cases lined up. So what happens, you do this case, you reverse this case and you go away. The tube is still inside. You tell the many places, there's a recovery room where they allow the nurses or the people who are observing to extubate. So there was no anesthetist, lapses in the post of monitoring. The tube was removed. The nurse later on could not intubate. Nobody could intubate and the patients have died. And this is especially true if in, in a difficult intubation. So God forbid, if you have a difficult intubation and you have a busy list on that day, if you have to, first of all, either cancel the entire list and be there with this patient because patient in the hand is most important than the next four patients. Secondly, medical legal issues can really crop up and take you for a ride if you don't, if you are not around in a difficult intubation case. Transfer the patient to the ICU if you are in a good setup. Tell the intensivist not to extubate. Your instruction should be on the paper properly that I will come and extubate tomorrow morning. And then you go the next day, find time, extubate the patient if the patient is really properly awake. That way you will save the patient. All these problems occurred, especially in obese patients. And in America, there are Afro-Americans. They are also obese. All these are difficult intubation. The tube was removed earlier. Later on, nobody could intubate and the patients died. Next slide, please. So I'll conclude by saying and take home messages that difficult intubation in obstetrics, like I told you, is a self-invited problem. We saw why, because we are using more of regional anesthesia. Our practice of giving GA is going down. Because I am doing less, my residents also are unable to practice. And that is why their skill set is low. Such resident, when he starts practicing, you can imagine how confident will he be or she be if they want to do a GA section. 
these sections obesity is is increasing so the uh, patients are going to be obese and then they land up in general anesthesia emergency sections in obese is a recipe for disaster i am again and again telling you so plan it well keep your setups excellent airway assessment is most important so before you touch the patient your assessment has to be proper and then you have decided what am i going to do next slide please choose the place of surgery very diligently i am telling you again and again the medical legal problems are on the rise because we choose wrong places to work we work in inferior setups when there is nothing over there no help middle of the night and courts are not taking this very kindly they straight away tell you what was your compulsion to work in that setup when you knew that this patient does not have a b c d e whatever problems they will have and they are penalizing the anesthesiologists for conducting cases in such places get trained help so have friends around so if you are working in an inferior setup at least call somebody who has everything the wisdom the knowledge so senior person or he is good in your work or he has a video laryngoscope share the money or ask the surgeon to pay the that anesthetist separately or if not give all your money to that person but get the help because one medico legal case and your lifetime saving will be wiped out difficulty again and again i am saying take this message that create a difficult airway cart in your place of work i have already told you guidelines so go with those guidelines and then previous slide please remember there is something known as situational awareness i want to give you the concept of situational awareness see many times what happens we are in a crisis you are working alone i work alone in most of the hospitals wherever i have residents it's fine but many a times they are in some other ot and i am all alone we all get fixated suppose now you have listened to this lecture and you have said oh dr shinde told me obese patient in an emergency is always a problem so it is playing in your mind and you are extremely anxious to put your tube into the throat of the patient now don't get fixated by this idea that your tube has to go in because it is not the intubation that is going to cause problems it is the hypoxia that is going to kill problem so what is the situational awareness here that what kills the patient it's the hypoxia that kills the patient not the tube so even if your tube is not going in find the ways to avoid the hypoxia and you will still be a winner provided you have the situational awareness so having situational awareness and not getting fixated to ideas is the most important thing i'll give you a small example and i'll stop the uh, lecture there was a pilot and there was a plane they were they were approaching the airport and for the landing and the uh, inside the cockpit suddenly alarm started coming and it shows that the landing gear the the wheels of the aeroplane are having a problem so continuously that alarm was flashing so the entire cockpit crew the co-pilot the pilot everybody was after it are what how am i supposed to now what is this problem what is this problem what is this problem so much so that they were just encircling over the airport nobody was looking at the fuel finally the fuel got over and the flight crashed so the situational awareness is very important that yes you have a problem at a hand but you may have another major problem which you have completely missed and the patient will go not because of primary problem but because of the secondary so have situational awareness get help choose your places wisely create a craft proper difficult airway cart and always train get train get train train your staff run algorithms simulations so that everybody tell your surgeons also to help you out run these simulations and you will realize how many mistakes we make when the thing actually happens and that is what my take home message to you would be that don't lose the situational awareness it is the hypoxia that kills 
and that is how you should i will like to say thank you to all and then i'm ready to take whatever questions you have thank you very much thank you sachin thank you sir thank you a lot with uh, so much difficulties we completed our case <laughs> yeah yeah no problem that that happens once it yeah. starts going then there is no problem. yeah it will it will go now tell me any questions people have so i will exit from my screen yeah first of all Yeah, tell me any questions. I would be more than happy to answer. So, yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm just checking in question and answer box because I'm not able to even mention that thing in uh, your lecture. That we generally ask to viewers put their question in a in the Q and A box. Can, even they can ask me live if they. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But even in chat box also they can answer. Even sometime you can raise your hand also. Yeah. You can ask the questions. what what you mentioned overall in your lecture sir that uh, day by day that uh, obesity is increasing and you are facing uh, almost 100 uh, maybe below that our situation may be for difficult intubation in cesarean sections so what you mentioned is right sir day and day out we regularly use ra for sections yeah so uh, nobody cares about that how airway will and another another thing is what people and the audience must understand is see what happens uh, suppose you are working with a surgeon and you are working in a hospital and he shows you a patient in the morning and he tells you look uh, dr shinde this is a patient she has just come go and do the pre op if she lands up in section we will do it whenever during the day time you are here only now you have seen her in the morning at that time she was in mild pain and uh, say 1 cm dilated or 2 cm but what happens is over the next 6 7 8 hours the labor progresses yes. now with when you re when she comes on to the table you, you have seen her in the morning you have seen her malam patti in the morning this 6 to 8 hours of labor has changed her malam it has again and again we have seen that what you do in the morning and then you do it after 6 to 8 hours you will realize the malam patti one has become malam patti four there is huge edema there is retention of fluid the lady is tired she is annoyed and then when you try to do your finals it may fail and then you have to give a fetal distress suddenly cord prolapse hand prolapse and now you are panicking you want to give ga she is eaten in between you can imagine what all can go wrong so whatever you are doing do your assessment of airway again even though you have seen her in the morning because that 6 to 8 hours of labor can change the picture dramatically and that is another important point you must remember that on table assessment of any obstetric patient is very very important so i as a member dr avinash godke asking can we use combitude uh, combitube for difficult intubation and why it is not included in cscv scenarios the combitube for that matter you it is an again a type of an lme only combitube is a type of lme only so obviously a second generation lma is used now i told you it can be supreme it can be igl it can be anything so it can be even a combi tube if it goes in 
of course That's it is it. included it is included a second generation supraglottic airway is of your choice you choose it can be a prosil it can be a combi tube prosil supreme ij or basca if you have that basca mask yes, yes. it can it is included in the uh, lma uh, this your guidelines so you said uh, in day and day out you use regional anesthesia for cesarean sections in uh, practice form uh, what type of needle you use sir, generally and, and okay, this is one I, uh, 20 20 2010 up to 2010 2010 okay from 1992 to 2010 that is 18 long years i used twinky needle and i used to go finer and finer and finer and finer matlab i started with jj hospital we used to get 23 then we moved to 25 then in private practice i have given with 26 27 29 also sometimes i have used but but 2011 i joined hinduja hospital car it was for 6 7 years i was there that time they started providing us with vitacor needles the pencil point ones and then overnight i shifted to a vitacor so 18 long years or 20 years almost i had used twinky twinky needle of different sizes from 23 to 27 28 29 but overnight i shifted to 25 vitacor and that is working so beautifully that there is hardly any incidence of pdph it does happen even with your vitacors also it happens but it recovers much earlier and the incidence between a 25 quinky and a 25 vitacor is very different it is less than 1% in a vitacor so if you are getting with and today vitacors are very widely available everywhere they are not very expensive and you only need little bit of practice and i'm sure anybody who has worked for 10 10 years in private practice will be easily make that switch if i could do it in one day like till yesterday i was using quinkin from tomorrow i started using uh your vitacor i can i'm very sure all of you can make it it's the it's the uh, what you say you have to make that attempt and today i cannot live with without vitacor now it is so much radical thing has happened there was a time when i was using only quinky and now there is a time i cannot live if 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 that particular hospital don't have vitacor matlab i will i will throw a fit i said what are you doing how can you live in today's times with a quinky needle this that ye wo i'll eventually give spinal but i'll see to it that when i go next time the vitacor is available there you make so much awaaz that they went because now i am very senior they they take me very very seriously yeah yeah if i yeah. make uh, awaaz they will get it so that is how it is so what are you are using in your practice what do you use use it in your case in case regularly 27 and 25 we are using whatever is suggest you mention about vitacor uh, from uh, our our um, city branch point of view i will appeal to all yeah please because it's it's very widely available T- tell your uh, local distributor of any yes uh, yes yes brown or definitely sir so i want to uh, ask about uh, what drugs nowadays you are using for sections okay i in routine practices yeah, routine practice only one single thing i have been practicing i have never changed like okay first when i started 30, yeah 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 ha there was that time it was a different drugs we had uh, 5% uh, xylocaine which was available which has now gone out of uh, india i don't see anywhere if you are getting it you are lucky otherwise Uh, i don't see it then the whole world we had 1% bupivacaine which was called marcaine yeah. that so went out of circulation then now we have 4 cc of 0.5 sensocaine and i mean heavy or whatever it is called i use 0.5% sensocaine heavy i always add fentanyl to my 
every spinal, whichever spinal I am giving, whether it is for cesarean section or whether it is for any TURP or what, fracture neck, femur, whatever, whatever, whatever I am giving, I will always add fentanyl 20 mics to my uh, spinal anesthetic combination. The reason being not to increase the duration. Fentanyl doesn't increase the duration of the anesthesia. It gives you a dense block. It improves the quality of the block. So, in private practice, you understand this. When you are called, you are every failure. Yes, yes. So, your quality has to be top of the line. Suppose you are doing a VIP, you have given spinal and she starts making noise. When they, most of the surgeons in Mumbai I have seen, they take out the uterus after the baby is out and then they are suturing. This is typical KEM hospital training. A lot of anesthetists, uh, a lot of surgeons are from KEM hospital with whom I work and they will always take out the uterus out. Now, you cannot increase the sensor can part of it. That is your 2.1 or 2.2 depending upon the height of the patient. And if it's a very short patient, I'll give two. But otherwise, 2.1 or 2.2 ml is a very, very standard dose. I always take it in a syringe. And I add 20 mics of fentanyl to it. That makes the volume 2.4. But it doesn't give you any problems. There may be mild hypotension, but your ephedrine should always be ready with you. Don't allow the fall to happen. There is always co-loading going on. There was a time when we used to pre-load the patient with one liter of ringer lactate and all. These days, if nobody does that. Everybody does co-loading. So along with the spinal only, you are giving your fluids ring lactate. You give 2.1 or 2.2 of 0.5% bupiocaine heavy along with 20 mics of fentanyl and that will take care of your uh, cesarean section in a normal height patient. If the patient is pretty short, 5 feet or less, yes, yes. then will go low. I will go 2 cc of 0.5 bupiocaine heavy. I have not tried the so, new drugs that so, are available these days. Uh, you and I mean, or like that, you those, those guys I think. coming and keep telling me, you know, it is. I'll tell you something like I said, private practice is a result oriented business. Yes, the yes. stakes are very, very high. Suppose somebody calls you even for an epidural in the first 10 minutes, your patient should be comfortable. You do what you want, but the patient has to be comfortable. So I always have a debate with Dr. Ketan Parekh, who is a who is a great proponent of uh, labor analgesia. He does fantastic work. And I always tell him this, that Ketan, we are in private practice. So I always prefer CAC for my labor analgesia. As compared to Ketan, who is Britain trained, there they give conventional epidural. Now, what my defense against is... That is, yes, I can give a beautiful epidural. That is not the problem. But I am giving purposely spinal along with my epidural because look at the circumstances. Okay? You have been called. You are seeing the patient for the first time. She is seeing you for the first time. She doesn't know how great you are an anesthetist. She has no clue. She has never seen you. She doesn't trust you. She is in pain. She has suffered for almost 6-7 hours and now she's 4 centimeters, 5 centimeters, and she's a primary. She wants this pain to stop. You've been called. You go there and if you give a CAC in the first 10 minutes, because CAC has a definite end point. You put in a needle, there's a CSF, you inject a drug in it, it acts definitely, sure shot. You went there, in the first 10 minutes her pain has disappeared, you are God for her. You are a God for her, she will obey whatever you say to her in the next 4, 5, 6, 7, 8 hours you are going to be with her. The whole idea is create that confidence. You cannot create confidence by just words or by the name what your uh, obstetrician has told you or a doctor Shinde is very senior, he's 30 years in practice. 
all that will go into the basket if you don't perform well so go there give your cac make her comfortable so i always add that fentanyl with sense again heavy again bup 0.5 so half cc point, even 0.25 cc of that and that is quarter cc of that and 20 mic fentanyl i always tell her you will get itching but your pain will disappear this itching is only because of the medicine which i am putting it will it is temporary it will take care of its own you preempt them you tell them before and even if it happens they are not bothered you don't tell them and it happens they start wondering so always always tell them what to expect bring them on the same page tell them that your pain is going to be less don't say are i have come now the pain is going to be zero don't say don't over promise if it becomes zero she will be more than happy but if it doesn't become zero she is going to eat your brains so then you say i am here to bring your pain down from 100 to 20 so you have that leeway of 20 so even if she is getting pain you will always say i know you are going to get pain i told you i'm going to bring it down i'm not going to take it off completely and always in certain sentences like she feels pressure she'll tell you i'm feeling pressure so this one sentence you always remember i picked this up from ketan again pressure is your friend pain is your enemy see these are sentences which are ready made they create such a great confidence in the mind of the patient they realize that he knows his stuff he knows his stuff and tell them exactly what is going to happen before so when it happens they know this man is absolutely in control of the whole situation so you tell them itching will happen and itching happens she loves you pain will go and pain goes she is happy with you you say pain will go and it doesn't go she is going to be eating your brains so i have i have also learned this over a period with doing so many of your labor analgesias so you have to manage the surgeon also you have to manage the patient also so many things are you have to have and the family very nice very nice so one one thing i want to ask uh, how many labor analgesias are converted into um, what i want to say scissor section like that, oh, that how many your spinals are converted into gs spinal into gf or cesarean sections no yeah, never yeah. never never because our surgeons are great if my spinal has acted well it has never failed me but yes if it doesn't act in the first 20 minutes i've had such such episodes also you know year you will always have one or two three years you will always have a failed spinal remember you are not here to prove anything how great you are okay the whole idea is yes i have worked for 30 years the the obstetrician trusts me there are times when the obstetrician is sure of my spinal and i am not so he tells me are hona react tu tham na thoda ve and i keep telling him no 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 this is not acting she is not even saying that i am feeling numbness in her legs that chal 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 she is fasting i am giving ga so he'll tell me are but why are you so much in a hurry i am telling you it will act and it has acted also and it has not acted also so it goes both ways point is once in a while god gets you brings you down to the earth so you realize you are not you are mortal you are going to make mistakes mistakes always happen the reason is always proximal remember whenever there's a failed spinal the reason is always proximal to the needle and not distal so don't try to blame patient halla patient mood uh drug is inferior unless five different anesthetists start complaining in the same hospital where you are working that their spinals are not acting you cannot blame the drug always blame yourself accept it you've given thousands of spinals don't try to prove anything make the patient sit again if you can't give ga wait for 20 to 30 minutes a certain how much is the action still remaining over there because sometimes it acts partially and then you want don't want to give ga because patient is eaten something in that case what are you going to do? so unless and until you are sure what you are going to do 
don't do anything i have one thing i have done i have never made in 30 years i have never made a patient sit again and give spinal again because long back when i had joined a hospital i had seen a senior anesthetist she had given and the level went up to here patient she had to intubate and send the patient to the icu that thing has created so much impact on my mind that i decided if i ever need to make the patient sit again and give i will not do this i will give general anesthesia thankfully i work in good setups everything is available but again in the middle of the night nothing is available yesterday night you will not believe yesterday night 12:30 i was called for a cesarean section fiction patient had full meal in the hospital in the labor room at 9:30 <coughs> i just lost my head yesterday i shouted the hell out of the sisters and i said which hospital in the world feeds the patient when you know she is a primary in labor she can move to a cesarean section or a normal delivery how can you feed her so the rmo is telling me but she was for normal delivery i said she was but she can move in any way now suddenly the cord comes out or a hand comes out you want me to give ga she has had full dinner how am i going to give her general anesthesia so they were like looking at me as if you know i have come from moon or venus somewhere and i am talking some strange things so this is what happens thankfully my spinal worked i was extra careful even the patient was general ward and i had a resident i said you are not going to touch this patient i am giving this spinal because this is not the time you are going to learn your spinals if this doesn't act i am in for trouble because now i have to give ga she is eaten and she was not 100 kilos but she was around 85 86 kilos so i never wanted to give general anesthesia in a full stomach patient i saw to it i gave a proper vitacar 25 2.2 plus 20 my expentinil it acted beautifully everything was hunky dory and i came home at 2 o'clock happy that i was never needed to give general anesthesia so like to answer your question if my spinal fails i will 100% give ga unless i i'm very sure that this is a difficult ga patient is not fasting or some other anatomical problems uh otherwise spinal works beautifully no problems and uh, spinal going into ga is not happened because most of the surgeons finish it and you are giving anavin with fentanyl it will last for 2 to 2 and a half hours it's very unlikely that the section will last 2 to 2 and a half hours unless there's a problem and in that cases then again also i have given the luckily i have never had a full stomach patient spinal not acting and i have to give ga that has not yet happened i don't want it to happen again i want yes. to be kind definitely of- Yeah. definitely no one should uh, think Only like that or should not happen to any anesthesiologist life so one one person uh, i don't know name anonymous person asking on this same situation in case of high spinal analysis i had to intubate the patient yeah. which was in emergency some say give bag mask for some time and tied over the crisis but i feel very risky to give iprr in yeah. anc patient who is always supposed to be full, full stop Agreed. what will you guide to manage this scenario no it is better to put in your tube straight away put in a tube straight away see get help you know where the problem starts i'll tell you 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 have nobody in the ot and then who's going to give required pressure see the problem is who is going to give required pressure see there's a set protocol now you have you want to give ga you have you yourself has said every pregnant patient is a full stomach patient so technically you are supposed to give a required pressure one person gives required pressure another person intubates now you want to put in a tube so don't even ventilate with mask oxygenate for 3 minutes with 10 liters of oxygen allow tidal oxygen to become 90 95 79 Okay. Then, if proof of all, don't ventilate. Give vaccine, colon, or whatever. Again, don't bag mask. 
and because you have oxygenated for three minutes you will be able to put in your tube one more thing you can do is your nasal prongs and put them on 16 liters that is your maximum flow on a on a meter 16 liters give a little propped up position so what it does is the nasal oxygen that goes into nasopharynx, oropharynx, trachea, it causes something known as apneic oxygenation. Humans take oxygen and give away CO2. So at the alveolar level, there is oxygen going in and CO2 coming out. Because of that pressure difference, oxygen keeps on going, CO2 keeps on coming up. But what happens is, what you are interested in is giving oxygen. So, propped up position. 3 minutes, tidal volume, 10 liters per meter uh, per minute oxygen, nasal prongs, 16 liters, propofols choline, no bag masking, quick laryngoscopy. Now, the moment somebody has started injecting pentothal or propofol or whatever, there is a cricoid pressure given. Now, cricoid pressure is or required pressure is 20 newtons. How do you decide 20 newtons? Now that you have to practice. Now how do you practice? Take a 20 cc syringe. Okay, I'll tell you two methods. Take a 20 cc syringe and aspirate air in it. Put it ulta on a table and with your these two fingers, keep pushing the plunger. Okay. So, because you are going to give required pressure like this. So, you are going to keep pressing with these two fingers and thumb. Keep pressing that. You will get that feel. Now, I cannot describe a feel on the video. So, I am telling you how to do it. Take a 20 cc syringe. Empty. Put air in it. Put it on a table. And try practicing with your two index, your index finger, your middle finger and your thumb onto the plunger that pressure that is 20 newtons this is one method of training so you keep training your ward boys you keep training your nurses you keep training your surgeons or whosoever is going to assist you that is the correct and your other hand should be behind the neck of the patient because the moment you put pressure here there will be flexion of the neck and you will not be able to it. so one hand behind other hand onto the neck pressing with the same force of 20 newtons. Yes, that is what you should be able to do. That is one method of knowing 20 newtons. And the other method is when you put pressure onto the patient's head or your head if for that matter and press it hard, the point at which look, look in a mirror, you will realize at particular pressure, the blanching of the skin occurs. That blanching of the skin occurs at 20 newtons. So if you are doing this, look at the mirror and keep pressing your forehead. That pressure at which there is a blanching of your forehead skin, that is a 20 newtons. So these are the two methods by which you can train your staff. And that training will be helpful to you in a difficult situation. So this is kind of simulation which I am trying to tell you. See, try to run these scenarios in your nursing home, in your place of work, in your department, and you will realize how many mistakes occur. There are no clear communication that is happening. It means I do simulation workshops also, so I know how, how things go bad. The communication has to be very clear. Okay, the most experienced person is the one who puts in a tube. The less experienced person puts in the required pressure. So, if, suppose you are the only anesthetist, your surgeon is going to put the required pressure. Wrongly given required pressure makes the intubation difficult. So, if your intubation is becoming difficult, you realize that he is doing it wrongly. So, for that moment, then tell him, okay, Baba, do you remove your finger because my intubation is becoming difficult? In that case, do it without any required pressure, put your tube in. So the whole essence of my talk is that your tube should go in fast. There should be required pressure. Whether it works or no, I don't know. But there's also a lot of debates going on. Because what they say is when you put cricoid pressure, 
your idea is to block the upper esophageal sphincter between the cricoid cartilage and the vertebral body. But they have done MRI studies where the pressure was given, the esophagus moved sideways and it was never obstructed. So you were under a false sense of security that everything is hunky and dory and still the patient aspirated. So required pressure, whether it works or no, there's a lot of debate going on. But medical legally, at least you should attempt it. For that, you must train your staff. If the training is inadequate, your required pressure is not going to be adequate. Then if you're wrongly done, required pressure will make your intubation difficult. So in such circumstances, tell him to remove the finger and you intubate the patient fast. Otherwise, the aspiration is going to happen if at all the patient vomits. It's not that every patient vomits, but you cannot predict who will vomit. I have no way of telling you that this guy will vomit, this guy will not vomit. So then in that case, you know 2.5 pH, 25 ml of ga gastric volume is good enough to create aspiration pneumonitis. So that is why I said give ranitidine give pan 40, reduce the acidity, and then you can intubate. So at least even if 25 ml gets aspirated, the pH will not be 2.5. So your patient will not die because of aspiration. And God forbid it happens, then send the patient to the ICU on the ventilator, symptomatic treatment, hypoxia, and that shunting becomes less over a period, higher level of antibiotics, lavage of the lungs, chest physiotherapy, that will eventually save. But it has a very high mortality. Mendelssohn is the one who invented it. And that time, out of the 65 cases, 63 died. When Mendelssohn did this study, 65 patients, 63 died. That brought his attention to the syndrome. And then he realized that this is causing, and the mortality has not come down even today. Today we take care and we don't allow the patients to aspirate. But if, God forbid, aspiration occurs, then a lot of patients still die. And that is the whole idea. The essence of this is not to allow the aspiration to occur. The aim is to prevent rather than treat. Okay. What next? Yes, sir. Sudhir Kulkarni, sir, has raised his hands. Sir, you want a question? Sudhir sir, you can unmute yourself and can ask question. Meanwhile, I will uh, continue this discussion yeah. with sir. Yeah. Sir, uh, you mentioned about uh, full stomach. Yeah. Uh, I want to know uh, what you have in your difficult airway card. As you mentioned, you are using regularly video laryngoscope. Yeah. Uh, with that, you really uh, maintain your uh, what I can say difficult intubation card with this uh, VL scope? Yeah, yeah, see, we have a we have a cart, like I showed you the picture. Yes, yes, same, same, same. That cart is there. We have a fiber optic in most of the institutes also. And in bigger institutes, we have multiple video laryngoscopes. So for every ICU, there is a video laryngoscope. Every floor, there is a video laryngoscope. Every ICU has a difficult airway cart. See, these are, of course, these are bigger institutes. I am not yes, saying yes. That. These are big institutes where, yes, yes, yes. I mean, if they have uh, seven, eight ICUs on different, different floors, you're not going to share your video laryngoscope. I have a CMAC. I don't own one, but most of the places where I go, I have uh, requested the management to have a CMAC. So most of them have obliged. And so now I always use the D blade of a CMAC. I don't use normal blades at all because normal blades don't give you any advantage. It is the D blade, the extra curved blade of the CMAC that brings your Cormac Lehan 4 to 3 to 2 or 3 will come to 1, 4 will come to 2 and the intubations will become very, very easy. 1 to 2 steps down on a Cormac Lehan becomes your intubation really becomes beautiful. On top of it, you have to give a head up position, ramp position, oxygenate well. See, it's a sequence of events which you must remember. You're going to oxygenate well. 
you're going to plan it well you're going to have different sizes of blades ready but when in difficulty or suppose i'm not doing this is related to obstetric suppose i'm not doing an obstetric case i'm just doing a bariatric case of say 170 kilo patient i'm going to give a ramped up position oxygenate well for 3 minutes with 10 liters of oxygen and then i will give propofol of whatever muscle relaxant i am using a scolin or a i generally don't use scolin i use itracurium or cisetracurium whatever i am using depending upon the patient's condition that i will give and i will directly go for video learning i don't attempt any other because i know my first attempt of intubation is the best attempt of intubation i don't want to try out a time second time then call for vl and all. no if you have a vl then let your first intubation be on the vl because ours is a generation which has done 20 years on normal normal laryngoscopy yes yes, yes. In the last 10 years we are doing video laryngoscopy so we are good in both i would say a younger boy who comes today will be very well trained on video laryngoscopy i really wonder if he doesn't get video laryngoscope outside will he be able to do a normal laryngoscopy with a normal bed a size 3 bed or of size bed? but that that person has to practice somewhere to get this but for all others like our generation people we are good in both because we have worked in absolute pathetic conditions and now we are working in good condition we've seen nothing hand on pulse anesthesia to the best of the monitors we have seen video laryngoscope we have seen single blade uh, laryngoscopes so we've seen everything from twinky needles we've seen to which yes. from here we have seen desflurin from for what for twin to fentanyl so everything we have seen we have we have learned on the job so ours is a good generation we are uh, so we we can work in adverse condition i don't know that the newer boys will be able to work in adverse condition but i would say instead of then working in adverse condition change your conditions buy all those things invest well and do a case properly rather than cribbing about it like you said you use quinky needles and i said overnight if i can shift after 20 years of practice on quinky to vitacker i'm sure every one of you who's listening is going to do it it doesn't yes. take much just make it available and start giving kya hoga initially two three may fail usse zyada kya hoga and why will that fail spinal doesn't change the end point doesn't change unless the csf comes you don't inject and it's csf spinal has a definite end point the csf has to come till that time don't anything else i think sir you covered a lot on difficult airways in obgy patients even you mentioned on other topics also so we will really uh, learn from you related to spinals and even about related to airways also a lot of things learned uh, from iscc branch 100 members so they will very much thank you sir on this evening of our 16th october uh, we are uh, discussing the, our topics and uh, doing our work really i feel appreciated and very feeling happy that we are in 75 years you with you actually and our 25th but uh, i am to say silver jubilee year also silver jubilee so, year yes yes tumi kai conference vaire keli te kai kara apan karuya cha yeu yes yes sir. yes sir. definitely definitely karuya sir tumi simulation madhe ahat na sir mostly simulation madhe ahe ata ata karayla lagalo simulation me adi nahi karaycho ata okay recently kela ata mi gangala gangala majha dusra i am doing a different work ata mi ithe or la simulation सिम्युलेशन पार्ट घो विचार मैं विचार वैभवी उपाध्य नंबर देते 
आता ओनली प्रॉब्लेम कुठे येतो ना ते मशिनरी लागते सिम्युलेशन साठी आणतात ती लोक ते आणतात मग त्याचे चार्जेस वगैरे सगळे तिला माहिती आय विल कम विथ वैभवी टू नांदेड दॅट इज माय प्रॉमिस आय एम गिव्हिंग यू वेन एव्हर यू कॉल इफ आय एम फ्री ऑर इफ आय एम नॉट ट्रॅव्हलिंग समवेअर आय इफ आय एम इन टाऊन आपण ना ती ठरवूनच करूया मस्त आय एम टेलिंग यू दॅट इज रिअली हेल्पफुल इट देर आर डिफरंट सिनॅरिओज इट टेक्स यू टू द नेक्स्ट लेवल आणि इतकं ते आपल्यातल्या चुका आपल्याला कळतात की कळतात कळतात मी तेच ते जॅनचं प्लॅन आहे माझं करूया मी तुला वैभवीचा नंबर पाठवतो ती फक्त आता सिम्युलेशन करते शी इज ऍट लता मंगेशकर दिनानाथ मंगेशकर हॉस्पिटल पुण्याला आहे शी इज व्हेरी वेल ट्रेन्ड शी हॅज बीन ट्रेन्ड इन हॉंगकॉंग शी वॉज आणि पण कुठे ती बँगलोरला होती आता पुण्यामध्ये बेस्ट आहे आणि आता एनएसिया सोडून सिम्युलेशन ट्रेनिंग आय वुड रेकमेंड डेफिनेटली हर नेम अलॉंग विथ हर आय विल डेफिनेटली कम नंबर पाठवतो ओके येस येस सो आय विल कन्क्लूड इन दिस सेशन व्हेरी व्हेरी मच थँक्यू to hemant sindhe sir our uh, very lovable person from misa news he is the editor in chief and uh, we did a lot of work in misa news and msa chapter also so i think sir uh, we will meet in borivili uh, definitely yeah. on the eve of our meetings so okay. thank you sir thank you once again pleasure, pleasure. yes bye. bye bye have a good night bye 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 yes bye bye so bye